Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome. I'm Mike Mathias, Interim Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. Before we proceed with today's ceremony, there are several announcements to make. The first announcement is required by the Maryland Fire Prevention Code. The exit doors have been inspected and are unlocked. For your own safety, look for the nearest exit. In case of emergency, please walk. Do not run to that exit. We now remind you to please silence your electronic devices. We also ask the guests to not leave their seat to take pictures during the ceremony. Doing so often blocks the view of others and is against regulations set by the state fire marshal. There will be a professional photographer taking photos of the graduates as they cross the platform to receive their diploma. Please also refrain from blocking the rear entrances to the arena which is also prohibited by the state fire marshal. Today is a very special day for everyone here. We understand that many of the friends and family of today's graduates will want to acknowledge their accomplishments with enthusiasm. We welcome you to do so. We also ask that you respect the dignity of the ceremony and be considerate of everyone by keeping your applause brief so that the name of each graduate can be clearly heard. Please refrain from extremely loud or extensive, extensive displays of celebration out of respect for the graduates that follow yours. At the end of the ceremony, we ask that guests not leave their seats until after the recessional, when all of the students have left the arena. We thank you in advance for your understanding and cooperation. And now let us begin. The nearly thousand-year-old tradition of commencement begins with the entry of the Grand Marshal carrying the University Maze. This year we are led by one of our most senior and respected faculty members, Dr. James Siku, Professor of Geography. Frostburg State University faculty and professional staff are led by the faculty marshals, Dr. Shaquille Rahman, Professor of Management, and Dr. Jody Eric, Professor of, Pro Professor of Educational Professions. As the faculty and staff enter, you will notice the dignity and pageantry of the traditional commencement as symbolized by the academic regalia worn by the participants. The mortarboards and robes that serve as symbols of intellectual pursuit may be traced back to the medieval universities of Europe. Information regarding the regalia may be found in your program. The President's stage party includes the officers of the university and other participants in today's ceremony. This institution's first commencement was held at the Frostburg Opera House on June 10, 1904. At that ceremony, Governor Edwin Warfield presented degrees to eight young women graduating from State Normal School Number 2. 
Today, today we celebrate the 160th commencement at Frostburg State University. There are 771 candidates eligible to receive degrees today. Candidates for degrees will be led by the faculty marshals and will be introduced today by Dr. Jody Welch, Professor of Educational Professions, and Dr. Mike Monahan, Professor of Management. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and welcome the Frostburg State University graduating class of 2022.
pleasure to turn these proceedings over to Dr. James Hiku, University Grand Marshal. As University Grand Marshal, I declare the 160th commencement exercise open. The audience will remain, will please remain standing and join in singing the national anthem led by the Chamber Singer. It is my pleasure to present to you Dr. Ronald H. Nowacek, President of Prospect State University. Good morning. I'm so glad you could all be here today to witness this important moment in your students' lives. On behalf of Prospect State University faculty and staff, I welcome you to the 2022 Spring Commencement Ceremony, the 160th ceremony held by Prospect State University. We are celebrating today not just with those of you sitting here, but with many more loved ones all across the world who are witnessing our ceremony streamed live over the internet. Let's all send a welcome to all of these viewers online. At the count of three, I want you to say hello from Prosper. One, two, three. Hello from Prosper. Thank you. I would also like to take a moment to recognize the military veterans among our graduates in our audience today. Prosper State University, for the 11th year in a row, has been recognized as a military, military friendly institution. As the number of veterans and military students continues to grow, we've been able to see the positive influence they are having on our university community. Will all the veterans and active duty military here today please stand so that we can express our gratitude to you for your service?
Thank you. We also asked the graduates to invite a faculty or staff member to this ceremony who made a difference in their time here. I'm pleased that nearly 20 individuals were invited by students, some more than once, and many of whom are seated on this stage or in the audience. I ask that all faculty and staff in attendance please stand to be recognized. And I would like to introduce several special guests with us this morning. Joining us is the Mayor of Frostburg and FSU alumnus, the Honorable Robert Flanagan. His friend, Ms. Melanie Moore, is also joining him this morning. Bob and Melanie, thank you. We also have Ms. Ellen Edmondson, General Edmondson's wife, with us today. Welcome, Ellen. And lastly, we have General Edmondson's mentor, retired General William E. Kip Ward, and his wife, Mrs. Joyce Ward, with us as well. General Ward, thank you for your over 40 years of service. And Mrs. Ward, thank you for supporting him in his 40 years of service. And thank you for honoring General Edmondson and Mrs. Edmondson by being with us today. We are celebrating the achievement of an important goal today, that of receiving, no, earning a college degree. For each graduate, you face challenges unique to you because of the pandemic we've experienced over the past two and a half, over two years. I believe your degree will open doors for each of you to become engaged and successful citizens and leaders. Know that you are following in the footsteps of many other successful Frostburg State University graduates. And those other graduates, the alumni of Frostburg State University, are there to support you. We are very pleased to have been part of this journey and know that as part of the Frostburg State University family, that you can call on us as you tackle those new challenges. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2022. We are honored to have with us today Regent Jeff Canella, President and Managing Director of Cornerstone, a Washington, D.C.-based consulting firm that specializes in government relations and public affairs communications. He leads the day-to-day -day operations of the firm's 100 professionals and 10 offices. In addition to his service on the University System of Maryland Board of Regents, Mr. Ganella is very active in the community. He is the former chair of the University of Maryland College Park Foundation Board of Trustees and a former member of the Philip Merrill College of Journalism Board of Visitors. Regent Ganella has visited with us at Crossford State University engaging with staff and students, touring our facilities, and learning about our priorities and challenges. He is a friend both to Mountain Maryland and Frostburg State University. Regent Canella, we are grateful that you're sharing your time with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, Regent Canella. Good morning. I am delighted to be here to extend best wishes and congratulations from the University System of Maryland and its Board of Regents. After two years of recorded greetings and virtual ceremonies, I'm especially pleased to be here with you in person. Let me start by expressing my deep appreciation for President Ronald Nowacek, his leadership team, and the outstanding faculty and staff at Frostburg State University. Thanks to your collective vision, leadership, and hard work, FSU continues to thrive as an institution of educational excellence and impactful service. To the graduates we celebrate today, let me say this. Even under the best of circumstances, what you have achieved takes hard work, persistence, and dedication. And as we all know, these past few years have been far from the best of circumstances as imaginable. But I believe that having to succeed under these difficult conditions has its own reward. The resilience, adaptability, and tenacity 
you have gained will serve you well throughout your career and your life. The knowledge and experience that you have received here, that you've earned here, are yours forever. And let me also take a moment to acknowledge the family and friends who have shared in your struggle and sacrifice. I know they are proud of you and your success today. Frostburg State is a special place. It is committed to excellence in the education and the development of its students and committed to the cultural and economic development of Western Maryland. Today, you become an enduring part of that proud and impressive legacy. No matter what direction your life takes, no matter what challenges you next confront, never forget that life is not measured by what happens to you, but how you respond to what happens to you. And as Robert Kennedy famously said, only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatness. Once again, I offer each and every one of you a well-deserved congratulations, and I wish you all the best in the years to come. Good morning. My name is Dr. Sudhir Singh, and I'm the Dean of the College of Business. I have the honor of presenting to you Ms. Sarah Robertson as the commencement speaker from the College of Business. Her biography and list of some of her accomplishments can be found in your program, specifically page 10 of your program. On behalf of the faculty and students of the College of Business, I'm pleased to present to you our commencement speaker, Ms. Sarah Robertson. Sir? Good morning to my fellow graduates, FSU faculty, staff, administration, and our family, friends, and the very uncomfortable bleachers around us. I never thought I'd be given the honor to speak in front of my graduating class at the most anticipated event of our past four years, but alas, here I am. Of course, I've watched dozens of other speeches to try to prepare myself. I watched the inspirational speeches from the likes of Will Ferrell, Elon Musk, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and others much more accomplished than I. So no pressure, right? <laughs> but I'm never going to be Buddy the Elf, nor the world's richest man who literally bought Twitter, nor the Terminator, despite what my very defined biceps may imply. But even if we have thoughts like this, where we compare ourselves to others, we must remind ourselves that we are far different from who we all were four years ago, and that is something to be very proud of. For instance, four years ago, I wasn't motivated to go the extra mile, nor was I willing to ask for help. I didn't know what I believed in, nor did I know where I was going. I was stuck in a comfort zone that wasn't in my best interest, but it was easy. It was easy to be static and to think that the only part of me worth being proud of were the grades I got or how funny I was. But you can tell that I gave up on the latter. It wasn't until the end of my second year at FSU that I realized that I wasn't the person that I was meant to be. So to fix this problem, I had to put in the effort. I found a vision of a future that I wanted and began working towards it. I realized that if I wanted to get anywhere, I needed to care about things in life, including myself. I do think we're far enough into the speech that I can throw a dramatic quote at you without uh, seeming unoriginal. There's a great quote from Robin Williams that has helped me put life into perspective, and maybe it will help you all too. Quote, medicine, law, business, engineering, these are all noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. End quote. I think especially at this point, after four years of classes preparing for a career, it's important to remind ourselves to pursue other personal interests and think about what it is that we truly live for. Now, a piece of advice for you all that absolutely nobody asked for. When you leave this building, graduates, officially graduated, how exciting, I want you to thank those that bring joy into your life and those that you care about. I found that you can't go through life alone, no matter how independent you were raised. I'll start by thanking some of the people who are here to thank me tonight. Thank you to all of the professors who have taught me everything I know about business, 
and for being my professional role models, even if you don't know I signed you up for that. I want to thank my parents, older sister, and my Mimi and Pat for raising me with love. I'm also sorry to my sister for hitting you with that shovel that one time. If I hit you hard enough, you probably don't remember that. I want to thank my boyfriend for pushing me to become the best version of myself when I needed it most, and for always being someone that I can count on to be there for me. I also want to thank my grandmother, Irma, who isn't here today, but is undoubtedly causing a ruckus at the nursing home, especially because she specifically told me not to mention her name in this uh, speech, so of course I had to do it to her. Love you, Grandma. As a business major, I can assure you that the relationships you have with others and the joy you give and receive in the world are the most valuable forms of currency out there. Pretty sure I saw that in economics textbook one time. So pursue whatever it is that you live for and find joy in life, for that is more valuable than any paycheck you could get, although a nice salary wouldn't hurt either. Lastly, I have the honor to say, truly, congratulations for the class of 2022. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Dr. Boise Williams, Dean of the College of Education. I'm proud to introduce to you today our speaker, Mr. Quentin Demps. His biography and list of some of his accomplishments can be found in your program. On behalf of the faculty and the students in the College of Education, I'm pleased to present to you this morning our commencement speaker, Mr. Quentin Dent. Good morning. I want to start off by thanking Dean Williams and the faculty at the College of Education for giving me the opportunity to stand here on the stage today. It is an honor to be able to represent the College of Education as a commencement speaker. I would also like to acknowledge and congratulate all my fellow graduates for making it this far. We have spent years working towards this goal, and we have finally reached the end of this chapter. Even though this chapter has come to a close, this is only the beginning. As we move on to start our next chapter, I would like to offer five ideas that I believe would be worthwhile to contemplate and incorporate in your own life, in, into your own lives. Number one, become comfortable with being uncomfortable. This means to strive to get out of your comfort zone, take risks, accept change, face adversity head on, and not be controlled by your fear of the unknown. It is inevitable that you will one day come to face something in your life that will make you uncomfortable in one way or another. In those moments, ask yourself, am I going to conquer this uncomfortable feeling or succumb to its hold on me? Don't always try to cling to what is comfortable, but always try to find a way to be uncomfortable. Number two, be open to making mistakes, making bad decisions, and experiencing failure. Face the fact that no matter how much you try, you will never be able to live a life that is perfect. This is not to discourage you, but to encourage you to accept living a life of an imperfection and making the most of it. Use those experiences as stepping stones for the life you want to live and the person you want to be. Understand that it is great to be human and stumble every so often. Setting such an impossible standard is going to do nothing but make us feel unsatisfied with ourselves. Number three. Choose to surround yourself with people that will build you up. Make sure you choose friends who will challenge you to be the best version of yourself. Find friends that will hold you accountable when they see you doing something that goes against your character. Choose friends that you know will have your back in any situation and do anything for you to see you succeed. Develop friendships where they will not make you compromise your values to be friends with them. And build friendships with those who will be there to support you at your lowest and celebrate with you at your highest. Number four, live a life of integrity and dignity. Integrity is being someone who is a person of their word and has conviction about their values. Integrity is demonstrating consistency and discipline in all aspects of your life 
So the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Dignity is having a level of self-respect that will stop yourself from putting others above you and sacrificing yourself for others. Dignity is also sometimes having to pay the price of being disliked and choosing to travel down the path that is painful. Lastly, number five. This is a simple yet incredibly powerful quote from Kyojo Rengoku that has resonated with me ever since I heard it. He says, set your heart ablaze. What I believe he means by this is to fill yourself up with a fiery passion that can't be extinguished by anything or anyone. Be an unyielding force in the face of all trials and tribulations. Do not adhere to what others have perceived to be and have assigned to you as your limitations. Be someone who is always surpassing your own limits in anything you put your heart into. Give your all in anything you do and show your dedication to everything you value. Now, for my final remarks. When I first visited Prosperity State University, I felt like I was becoming a part of a community that actually cared for me as an individual. The faculty at the College of Education worked hard to build a relationship with me and provided me with overwhelming support for as long as I've been here. That's what put FSU above the rest. I knew I had made the right choice in attending FSU. Coming to FSU will always be one of the best decisions I have made in my life and will be forever grateful for my experience here. I can say without a doubt that we are all proud to say that we are Prospect State University alumni. As we depart from here today, I hope everyone here will ignite the flame within yourself and set your heart ablaze. Thank you. One more thanks to both of our student speakers. Thank you both. General Edmondson, will you join me up here, please? It is my honor and pleasure today to introduce Major General Robert L. Edmondson II to receive the Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. The honorary degree approved by the University of Maryland Board of Regents is given by Frostburg State University to an individual who has had made significant and lasting contributions to society and is in some way connected to Frostburg State University. A native of Willingboro, New Jersey, General Edmondson graduated from Frostburg State University in 1990 with a business marketing degree. On campus, he played football, participated in Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and was commissioned as a second lieutenant from FSU's ROTC program. General Edmondson went on to earn a Master of Science in Administration and Information Resource Management, and also a Master of Science in National Security Strategy. Major General Edmondson was recently appointed as the 17th Commander of the U.S. Army Communications Electronics Command and Senior Commander for Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland, responsible for enabling the Army's warfighting readiness by providing sustainable global command control, communications, computers, cyber, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, or as the Army knows it, C5 ISR, any medical material support. Among his numerous awards, he has received the Legion of Merit, Bronze Star Medal, and Defense Mer Mer Meritorious Service Medal. You can read more about General Edmondson's distinguished military background in today's program. Rob is an FSU ambassador, often mentioning his ties to FSU and wearing FSU logo shirts when not in uniform. He visits campus regularly, attended the dedication of the FSU Veterans Center, and meets with student leaders on campus to share his thoughts and experiences. On a personal note, and he knew I was going to mention this, my only moment of concern, and it was more of an error in judgment on my part, was when General Edmondson lost the coin toss at the FSU football game last November on Veterans Day. As General Edmondson reminded me as he walked off the field after the coin toss, successful generals have backup plans. We went on to win the regionally televised game 56 to 3 and win the Mountain East Conference Football Championship.
General Edmondson has not been on this flight's journey alone. Within a week after graduating from FSU, General Edmondson married Ellen, his wife of over 30 years. Please help me again in recognizing Ms. Edmondson, who is with us today. The couple has two grown sons, Robert III and Alexander. The Edmondsons are dedicated members of the Frostburg family and continue to serve as advocates for FSU Bobcats worldwide. Regent Canella, would you come forward for the conferring of the Doctor of Humane Letters? It is now my privilege to confer this degree on a candidate who embodies the virtues of leadership, humility, commitment, and service. Therefore, General Robert L. Edmondson, second, I confer on you the degree, Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereof. Dr. Edmondson, I invite you to share some thoughts with the graduates. Well, thank you. Thank you so very much. And good morning, everyone. All right. Dr. Dr. Nowitzek, a distinguished guest, faculty, staff, graduates, soon to be graduates uh, of Frostburg State University, family, friends, and all those that are joining that are part of this ceremony today. It is an honor to stand before you today. I am truly humbled and honored to be a recipient of an honorary doctorate degree from this fine institution. Uh, I would like to let you all know up front that this degree speaks more to what Frostburg State University is all about, what it teaches, uh, than it does any individual that happens to be the recipient. So I am in debt to Frostburg State University. I'd like to congratulate uh, all of our soon-to-be uh, alum, and as an alum myself, as you walk across this stage, I completely know that it is a true privilege and it is an honor to be where you are. You know, it was only a few short years ago that I sat exactly where you sit today. You know, I was just kidding, it was actually a long time ago, it was 31 years ago, but who's counting? I still feel young. It was at this university that I learned the value of preparation and opportunity. It was at this institution that I learned about the diversity of thought by meeting people who didn't look like me, who, who didn't talk like me. It was at this institution that I learned how to overcome adversity uh, through the ROTC program. Uh, and of course, it was at this institution that I proposed to my wife 31 years ago, and for some reason, she actually accepted. So there's no doubt about it uh, that uh, I am full of Bobcat pride. Now, before I get to the true honorees today, our graduates, I'd be remiss if I didn't reinforce all the family members, university professors, faculty, staff, and others who supported the graduates along the way. I want to thank you for the hard work and dedication that you've all invested into the next generation to get them to this pivotal moment. And now to the reason that we're all here today, the graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, please give them one more round of applause. Okay, graduates, I'm going to share a few lessons with you. I'm going to share a few lessons with you as a fellow Bobcat, and I hope to be able to save you a little bit of time as you leave today to conquer all the challenges that are out there and to reap all the benefit of all the education and life experiences that you have earned up to this point. And, and my point is pretty simple. It is that you belong. And I'm sharing that with you so you don't question whether you belong or not. Because I don't know about you, but when I sat there, I wasn't too sure if I really belonged. And I knew that I had earned, but I needed reinforcement along the way. So I'd like for each of you to think a little bit about four or five years ago, before you started your journey. Maybe you were playing sports at your local high school, or perhaps you were fundraising for an important cause. Some of you may have been uh, 
taking a year off from school. And others of you were traveling, really brushing up on your Instagram, Instagram presence. That's right influences, I'm watching you. Maybe taking a few classes at another institution. Wherever you were four or five years ago, prior to your acceptance to Frostburg and prior to this journey, I'd ask you to remember all the hard work that you've done to get you to this moment. The assignments, the, the, the late nights, the early mornings, the homework and the exams. I want you to really understand if you've earned your point to where you are today. The energy and dedication that it took for you to get to this graduation, that's preparedness. And the acceptance into this university, well, that's opportunity. Remember the factors of life that motivated and inspired you to begin this journey in the first place, both the pros and the cons. Use that same energy that you had when you applied and when you excelled here at Frostburg as you continue in your career. Use those same talents that pushed you towards success as you continue to prepare for the next opportunity. You know, when I think about preparedness and opportunity, I can't help but think a little bit about my time here at Frostburg as a transfer student coming in. And yes, I was on the football team, I gotta admit, your team is larger and faster than our team was at that time. All right. But I was on the team nevertheless. And I had prepared myself the summer as I was coming into the institution, I was in peak physical condition. And at the end of that summer camp, I still wasn't on the A team. But little did I know, the first game, first quarter, virtually the first series, something happened, and the coach turned and said, Edmonton, you're in. That moment has stuck with me for over 30 years as an Army officer. And from it, I learned three major things that I'd like to share with you. First, there is no substitute for preparedness. You own your preparedness. I would never have been put in that game had I not worked so hard the summer before. And throughout the 30 years of my Army career, I've continued to prepare. While I may have taken off the helmet, I never stepped off the field in terms of continuous preparation for whatever is next to come. Secondly, opportunity. So what do I mean by that? Another way to look at opportunity is to think about timing. While we'll all be Frostburg alum together here really soon, our paths will take different journeys different avenues. It might depend on the number of applicants into a master's program as to whether that next opportunity is there for you, the number of seats available in a PhD program, whether your dream company is hiring this year or next. You don't control that. But what you do control is that if you are not ready, if you are not prepared, that opportunity will mean nothing and it will pass you by, which brings me to, to my third point. You never know who's watching. I can guarantee you right now that your employer, your next advisor, your mentor, the individuals on your resume are watching you closely, and they will continue to watch you closely. So to put a bow on the football story here, as that first summer camp came to a close, and I wasn't in the starting lineup, uh, my I really didn't think about the fact that didn't realize that the coach was watching me, but he knew he was watching me, and he knew I was ready, so when he put me in, he knew that I would be able to answer the call. It's important to remember to show others what they can't see, to show them that you are prepared. It's up to you to demonstrate that you are ready for whatever opportunity comes next. I congratulate you for your hard work and the resilience that you've shown this far. I implore you to continue to strive for greatness to stay hungry, to stay humble, to never stop wanting, never stop striving, never stop reaching, because you never know who's watching. Now, frankly, the coach continued to watch. And what he watched happen the next year was I started to spend more time in ROTC, less time in the weight room. More time on a field training exercise and less time memorizing plays. So just as easily as he put me in one summer, he took me out the next summer because I wasn't prepared for that job any longer. Now, i got to share with you, I'm kind of glad that he did, because it turned out pretty good. But the point is, he kept watching. As you begin your next great adventure, you're headed into the world, you're beginning your career, uh, you have a, a bright future ahead of you. For those of you that are still looking for opportunities, we've got some opportunities for you inside the United States Army, not only as active duty, not only as active duty soldiers, but as career civil servant civilian. As you begin this next chapter, wherever it takes you, keep one thing in mind. You are where you belong. There's no doubt about it. 
The preparation, dedication, and resilience that you've learned here at Frostburg State University makes it simple for you. I know that the model here at Frostburg, one university, a world of experience. Well, little did I know when I attended this university that one world of experiences were about to open up various avenues for me. And luckily, I was also taught here at Frostburg State University to blossom where you're planted. You see, in the Army and in, in, in the world that you're about to enter, you need to blossom where you're planted. Not only do we live and travel through countless places throughout our careers, but we also are assigned to different roles and responsibilities along the way. It's essential that we blossom where we're planted and that we not only focus in on what we're passionate about, but we also focus in on what we're being asked to do by others. If you take nothing else from my remarks today, I hope that you will take with you that you belong. You have a seat at the table. It's waiting for you. We may not all be the tallest, the fastest, have the highest SAT score or the highest grade point average. But understand this, graduates, you belong. You belong in leadership. You belong in the boardroom. You belong wherever your heart drives you to balloon. In your, if you, you prepare yourself, then when the next opportunity arrives, arises, it will be yours. I am so excited for you because I know how good it feels to use your college experience both on the field and off the field as a source of motivation for future opportunities. Today marks the first day of the latest chapter of the life that you're writing. You are postured for greatness. Thank you again for inviting me to share with you. I wish you all the best luck as you, as you step into this next great adventure. You've been well prepared by the professors here to carry forward, and I'm confident in your success. Now go forward and do great things. Thank you. May God bless you all. People first. Winning matters. Army strong. Let me be the first to say thank you, Dr. Edmund. Before we proceed with the granting of degrees, I want to give our students the opportunity to thank all those family and friends who helped get you where you are today. Students, please stand, face your loved ones, and give them a round of applause. Thank you. I think we're getting the part you're waiting for. We will not proceed with the granting of degrees. Candidates for the doctoral degree in education, the Master of Arts in Teaching, the Master of Science in Recreation and Parks Management, please rise and continue to stand. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science from the College of Education please rise and continue to stand. Candidates for the Master's degree in the College of Business Please rise and continue to stand. Candidates for the degrees Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science from the College of Business, please rise and continue to stand. I have the honor to present to you, upon the recommendation of the faculty of Frostburg State University, the degree candidates for May 2022. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of the University System of Maryland and the Chancellor of the University System of Maryland, Dr. Jay Perlman, and upon the recommendations of the faculty and the deans of the College of Business, Education, or Liberal Arts and Sciences, 
I confer upon you, upon certification of the completion of your studies, your degree, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereof. We will now proceed with the presentation of diplomas. I remind you that we welcome the audience to acknowledge the graduates' accomplishments with enthusiasm. However, we ask that you respect the dignity of the ceremony and be considerate of everyone by keeping your applause brief so that the name of each graduate will be clearly heard and I ask that the graduates cross the stage in a dignified manner. Thank you. That was a public announcement. We will now present the diplomas for the doctoral degree. Historically, a doctoral degree candidate wears a hood. This academic hood bears FSU's colors and the color of the student's individual field of study. It is this hood that symbolizes the high achievement of the doctoral student who has completed a rigorous course of study with honor and distinction. Doctoral degree candidate, please rise and come forward to receive your diploma from Dr. Malachi. Leading the candidates is Dr. Jody Wells, Professor of Educational Professions and Marshall for the College of Education, who will announce their names and dissertation titles. Doctoral degree candidates, as your name is read, please approach the stage. Dr. Colleen Swinger Bernard, because they didn't exist yet. Reflections on women in early American United States history, policy, and practice. Dr. Sandra Lynn Kaluzzi, the case for National Board Certification, lived experiences to aspire and sustain National Board Certification. Dr. Melanie Jean DeMoss, Perspective of Contemplative Practitioner at One Community College, a Narrative Inquiry Case Study. Dr. Rachel Lee Ferris, Experiential Learning in Higher Education Business Program, a Qualitative Case Study of Faculty Perception. Dr. Le Yolanda Michelle Harmon, Advanced Placement Course Access and Achievement in Northern and North Central Appalachia. Dr. Sherry Helmstetter, Mixed Methods Investigation, School Readiness in Relation to Early Childhood Programs for Children from Birth to Three in One State. Dr. Kathleen Ann Murray, The Impact of Orientation Programs on First-Generation College Students' Sense of Belonging. Dr. Jennifer Marie Ryan, Developing a Sense of Community in a Doctoral Cohort, The Student Experience. We will now present the diplomas for the master's degree. Historically, a master's degree candidate also wears a hood bearing FSU's colors and the color of the student's individual field of study. Master's degree candidates, please rise and come forward to receive your diploma from Dr. Nawaja. Leading the candidates are Dr. Michael Monahan, Marshall for the College of Business, and Marshall Welsh from the College of Education. Master's degree candidates, as your name is read, please approach the stage.
Juan Meredith Barrett. Emily Elizabeth Kick. Raphael Espinoza. Brianna Lee Evans. Lucy Eileen McMahon. Adiyanjo Oyunike Ola Di Meiji. Gavin Mwambi Omwega. Anna Iris Rivera. David Christopher Robinson. Lauren Sharpless Robinson. Stephanie Mimi Lee Rowe. Laura N. Amen. Marcy Bennett. Robert Wesley Bittinger, Jr. Jacqueline Braithwaite. Misty Marie Brittingham. Caleb Brown. Deja Cook. Stephen Scott Kesmer. Caitlin Laffey Yoder. John Paul David Patrick Lovegare. Karen Renee Ludwig. Sarah Mullet.
Dylan Michael Mannix. Seth Anthony Mannix. Kyla M. Nauman. Camden Wayne Nichols. Dion Vanessa Palu. Daniel Puzer. Kamalyn Raines. Caitlin Run. Jessica Lehman. Crystal Marie Tippett. Alexis Marty Wood. Haley Jude Yammer. Nicholas Z. Amos. <laughs> Tiffany A. Arnett. Kanan <laughs> Bartley. Nicole Bomber. Ellie O'Neill Bolton. Justice Wells Courier. Lauren DeWitt. Kimberly Ann Fisher. Mary E. DC. Jonathan Gianoli Guerrero. <laughs> Michelle Denise Harris.
Jessica Lynn Howe. Jill Helmstetter. Amy Hauser Jordan. Jacoby Martin. Megan Marie Ruthven. Krista Elaine Sawyer. Hannah Short. Emily E. Wagner Goveo. Taylor Watkins. Todd Christopher Werner. Nicole R. Andriani. Don William Reese Bonridge. Haley Murphy. Nicole Skidmore. Ashley Jones St. Alban. Corey S. Haber. Serdina Rita Tallywood. At this time, the university recognizes those baccalaureate degree candidates who have distinguished themselves by their academic excellence. Undergraduate students who have demonstrated outstanding academic performance will graduate with one of the following distinctions, cum laude, magna cum laude, or summa cum laude. The distinction of graduating cum laude is awarded to those students whose cumulative grade point average on a 4.0 scale is between a 3.40 and a 3.64. The distinction of graduating magna cum laude is awarded to those students whose cumulative grade point average is between 3.65 and 3.89. And the distinction of graduating summa cum laude is awarded to those students whose cumulative grade point average is 3.90 or above. Undergraduates who have achieved these honors are wearing gold tassels as part of their academic regalia. Those undergraduates graduating with honors will please rise at this time and be recognized. Congratulations in your honor and please be seated. We will now present the diplomas for the bachelor's degree. Candidates, as your name is read, please approach the stage to receive your diploma from President Nawaja.
Garrett for you. Lauren Olivia Beeman, Suma Kumlade. Michael Antoine Bell Jr. Abigail May Boomstockel, Magnum Kumlade. Amanda Lynn Borsa. Loudon James Bowman Fumlade. Dante Jamal Brown Magna Fumlade. Winston Thomas. David Umlade. Sierra Correa. Troy Deona D. Alexander Thomas Duddy. Justin Reed Dunklin. Star Coca Cola Eva. Race Eckley Cum Laude. Kawan Jerwell Edwards. Kyle James Fisher. Andrew Joseph Frostino. Joshua Edward Gates, Magna Cum Laude. Bernard B.J. Harris III. Asa Pine, Magna Cum Laude. Katie Hibbler, Cum Laude. Robert Kirby, Magna Cum Laude. Mark Langan, Jr. Cassidy, Tom, Kristen, Lee Vien. Austin, Michael, Lynn. Caden Umbangala Bennett. Nolan Moore. Lauren Norquist, Cum Laude. Zachary Joseph Noy, Suma Cum Laude. Maurice Vandy Palmer. Erica Page Payne. Kevin Pointer Jr. Tanya R. Priapi.
Jeffy, Jeffrey, Kelvin, Marquez, Proragno. Katie Richards. Carly Rodegeber, Magna Cum Laude. Victoria Rosen, Summa Cum Laude. Sarah Marie Robertson, Summa Cum Laude. Samantha Lynn Salder Cum Laude. Gavin David Satal. <laughs> Bo Sheen Magna Cum Laude. Paige Smith, Magna Cum Laude. Nicholas R. Dury. Dante Dion Thomas. Jamaya Labria Thomas. Connor James Fuller. Alana, Alana, Andrea Walker. Jaden White. Dalton Nathaniel Woody. Amanda Charlotte Allen, cum laude. McKenna Marie Arago. Mason Orion Austin Brantley. Adriana Nicole Baker, Summa Cum Laude. Malik Bachelor. <laughs> Alyssa R. Beat, Cum Laude. Jacob Bissler. Katie Marie Brenneman. Katie Elizabeth Bright. Cade Brindle, Summa Cum Laude. Brooke Renee Butt. Soleil Adriana Frisk. 
Magna Cum Laude. Tatum Nicole Cleavinger, Summa Cum Laude. David Vaughn Cotton II. Mackenzie C. Kramer, Magna Cum Laude. Dylan Keith Colton, Magna Cum Laude. Jenna Donna Dressman, Magna Cum Laude. Quentin Dent, Summa Cum Laude. Kevin Michael Duckett. Lakin Marie Elwood, Cum Laude. John Escobar. Oh, Heather Nicole Finney, Cum Laude. Emily Faith Fredisca, Cum Laude. Janet Osalamude Gumba Gigi. Caitlin Gornall. Catherine Emperatriz Bernardo. Dana Rebecca Hardy, Cum Laude. Elizabeth Grace Parsman, Summa Cum Laude. Ashley Nicole Louise Hayes, Summa Cum Laude. Melanie Louise Hayes, Magna Cum Laude. Dade Esther Princess Holmes, Magna Cum Laude. Kurt Riley Hot, Cum Laude. Chloe Safira Johnson, Magna Cum Laude. Hannah Jones. Sarah Louise Jones, Cum Laude. Victoria Cherie Jordan, Cum Laude. Kirsten Aliyah Joseph, Summa Cum Laude. Zaina Wagire Kaka. Sarah Mackenzie Cobbler. Celeste Nicole Kimball, Magna Cum Laude. Lindsay Christine Coleman.
Hannah Claire Maine, summa cum laude. Kristen Renee Miller, summa cum laude. Julieta Morgia Tab. Emma Grace Neff, Summa Cum Laude. Sean Anthony Patterson. Ashley Perrin, Summa Cum Laude. Mackenzie Jo Phillips, Magna Cum Laude. Caitlin Olivia Reed, Summa Cum Laude. Sarah Jo Sackett, Summa Cum Laude. Jalen Savoy. Jaleel Christian Scott. Macy Danielle Sloan, Cum Laude. Megan Nicole Smith, Magna Cum Laude. Miranda Rose Smith, Cum Laude. Christina Kathleen Stabler, Summa Cum Laude. Carson Steiner, Cum Laude. Angela Cease, Magna Cum Laude. Joshua Adam Taylor. Eden Christine Twig, Summa Cum Laude. Talia Alina Renee Walker. Anna Pauline Westward, Magna Cum Laude. Zachary S. Willis, Magna Cum Laude. Audrey Louise Winfield, Summa Cum Laude. Caitlin Renee Wolf, Summa Cum Laude. So how about a round of applause for our newest graduates?
right, we're almost there. My name is John Short. I am the Vice President for University Advanced Medicine. I'm also the Executive Director of the FSU Foundation. And graduates, you are about to join a distinguished group of more than 45,000 FSU alumni, many of whom are willing to be a resource and mentor for those, or for you, as I hope you will be for those that follow. So we have many foster graduates besides you in the audience today, so I would like to ask those alumni of FSU who are in the audience or in the stage behind me to please stand and be recognized. All right, here's how we're going to wrap it up. Graduates, please stand. Wow. In, rec in recognition of the transition from your role as student to that of alumni, please move the tassel on your desk from the right to the left. Your render is so small, all graduates will be exiting via the stairs to the left and the right of the stage and will return to the lower floor of the coach center. All stairs will be available to assist you. Audience, please remain in place until the academic profession has left the room. Please rise for the recessional. 